Yeah, I think we can just I think you have to have it open. Can you just open? Did we close it last time? I don't remember. I mean, if you want, you can keep this tab open and just get me on and go. Oh, I don't think you're in conversation. <laughs> Huh? I know how we really heard us last time we went through the feeling overwhelmed. Hey, did you see me? I just thought about it. It's so you don't have to do this to me when you go through and then you can. Oh, okay. I saw a little bit of a Huh? Ah, <laughs>
To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the full destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugan, the lore of the world. Supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subdued one from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. When the supreme among humans, you were born on this earth, you paced out seven strides and said, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise, then I prostrate. With pure bodies formed supremely pure, wisdom ocean like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, winner of the Lord, winner of the best Lord you. With the supreme signs, face like the spotless moon, color like gold to you I prostrate. You are immaculate, three worlds are now incomparably wise one to you I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the founder having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean. To you, the one gone to thusness, I prostrate. The purity which makes one free from attachment, the virtue which frees one from the lower realms, the one path, the sublime pure reality, to that dharma which pacifies, I prostrate. Those who are liberated and who also show the path to liberation, the holy field qualified with realization, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you, the sublime community intending virtue, I prostrate. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions. Perform only perfect virtuous actions. Subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a mirage, a flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, see conditioned things as such. Through these merits, may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the foe of faults, and be delivered from samsara's ocean, perturbed by ways of aging, sickness, and death. Sangezo, the Dawena, Shiragi, Borodu, Chimpe, Riva, Chimpe, 
Thus I have heard once the Blessed One was dwelling in Rajagriha on Vulture's Peak, together with a great assembly of monks and bodhisattvas. At that time, the Blessed One was totally absorbed in the concentration that examines all phenomena called profound illumination. And at the same time, the noble level of Kiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, was engaged in the profound practice of the wisdom Gambia, analyzing the five aggregates by nature. And then through the inspiration of the Buddha, the Venerable Sharikatra spoke to the noble level of Kiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, how should those of good family learn who wish to follow the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond? Thus he spoke in the noble level of Kiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva replied to the Venerable Sharikutra, saying, O Sharikutra, whatever son or daughter of good family wishes to follow the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond, should look at it like this, analyzing the five aggregates by nature empty. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is no other than form. Form is no other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, recognition, karmic formations, and consciousness are all empty. Therefore, Shariputra, all phenomena are empty without characteristics. They are unborn and unceasing. They are neither impure nor free from impurity. They neither decrease nor increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no recognition, no karmic formations, no consciousness. There is no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. There are no spheres of the eyes up to no spheres of the mind. There are none of these all the way up to the sphere of mental consciousness. There is no ignorance, nor is there destruction of ignorance. There are none of these all the way up to there is no old age and death, nor is there destruction of old age and death. Thus, there is no suffering, no cause of suffering, no cessation of suffering, and no path. There is no wisdom, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, because there is no attainment, all bodhisattvas hold to the wisdom gone beyond, and because there is no obscurity of mind, they have no fear. Passing utterly beyond falsity, they reach beyond the bounds of sorrow. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times are relying on the wisdom gone beyond fully and clearly awakened to unsurpassed, most perfect and complete enlightenment. Therefore, the mantra of the wisdom gone beyond, the mantra of great insight, the unequaled and unsurpassed mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering should be known as the truth, for there is no deception. The mantra of the wisdom gone beyond is proclaimed by Yonata. Oh, this is how a Bodhisattva Mahasattva should learn the profound wisdom gone beyond. Then the Blessed One arose from that concentration and praised the noble of Kiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, Very good, very good, O son of good family, it is exactly like that. The profound wisdom gone beyond should be practiced exactly as you have said, and then the Tathagatas will rejoice. When the Blessed One had said this, the Venerable Shariputra, the noble Avalokiteshvara, that whole gathering in the world with its gods, men, anti gods, and spirits, their hearts full of joy, praised the words of the Blessed One. So ends the noble discourse on the essence of the wisdom Gandhi. Never 
Now it is Thursday and we resume the way of the Bodhisattva, the way of the Bodhisattva for developing the mind of enlightenment where it has yet to arise, where it has arisen for extending it, and where it has arisen and has been extended to furthering it. And in this practice, in this context, we attend to the text, the way of the Bodhisattva. To developing the mind of, a, of awakening bodhicitta, where it hasn't arisen, the first three chapters of the way of the bodhisattva are dedicated. That is to the accumulation of the causes for the development of that mind. And then where it has arisen in aspirational form to engaging through it, through adopting the vows formally. The benefits of all of these practices we have described. Now where the mind of enlightenment has arisen, then it must be preserved and guarded. To the preservation of the mind of enlightenment where it has arisen, then the all important practice of conscientiousness. It is a meditation in conscientiousness and the topic of the fourth chapter, all of which deals with med conscientiousness as meditation and in its implementation. Oh, yes, that's a new sim that gave a torum gumares, torna, torum room of a quinzenta, torna, and in Yeva Yuba. The subject Nina and that the Tambo wondered of the shake your resonance, Payuga, Payutango Egg, Gorbados. Now, the mind of enlightenment mustn't be abandoned. It is inappropriate to ever abandon it. The reasons for this attitude then are presented. And then if the mind of enlightenment were ever abandoned, the disadvantage of having done so, these two are described. Conscientiousness for the purpose of preserving the mind of enlightenment is the top. Oh, to see that in the Hinduism, but that I'm going to tell you, tell you things. ตั้งนั้นคนนั้นที่มาเรียนสอนรู้สึกตัวเจ้าจิตเองก็ชาวเขาไปยินนะนะคนพอเราสิเลิกกันเรื่องกูจุอันนี้พอตั้งชาวย
thereby amount to abandoning the cause of sentient beings. And two, it would amount to disrespect to the witnesses one has called in the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. <clears throat> Now, should one abandon the mind of awakening, then what disadvantages follow? What is one's plight? Then the first two, two verses describe it. The children of the conqueror who thus have firmly grasped this bodhicitta should never turn, it, turn aside from it, strive never to transgress its disciplines. And then, uh, <clears throat> Shiva <laughs> The beginning verses describe how having made the commitment to the mind of awakening to abandon the mind of awakening would be to renege on the the commitment <clears throat> and follow this by description of of the future one faces that one is bound in for hell realms and that one has thereby destroyed any cause for greater future fortune oh yeah and <laughs> and this then is followed by a description of how it would be so that one would face hell realms should one abandon the mind of enlightenment through the illust illustration of taking a small promise, a small intention to do good to others and to renege upon it, that this would cause for one rebirth in hell realms. All the more so will it necessarily cause for one a future of suffering in the hell realms should one abandon the mind of awakening, which is the commitment to all sentient beings. So where it is the case that should one simply intend to show a small kindness to another and then renege upon that, and one faces a hell realm, then it is more so true of abandoning the mind of awakening. Mm -hmm.
<clears throat> for one has made a commitment, promised personally to carry out the well-being of sentient beings before the refuge as witness. Moreover, one has called as guests sentient beings to witness the event and then to follow this by reneging and abandoning the mind of enlightenment is to deceive and mislead all sentient life. How would there ever be any future fortune for one? In fact, that pathway upwards is effectively closed and one only faces a future in hell realms. Oh,呀,他現在你那,你他就我自己都不的,你個人就是這樣的,他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他
in that moment when the mind of awakening is abandoned, one has parted with, one has destroyed one's own purpose by destroying one's purpose, which was the very commitment to the well-being of others. Now, when the mind that is dedicated to the well-being of others is abandoned, then one's own purpose, too, is abandoned. <coughs> or there is no achievement of buddhahood, but through serving the well-being of others. So should one dispense with one's commitments to, to others, then one loses one's own purpose as well. And so for the bodhisattva in the downfalls, for the bodhisattva vow, abandoning the mind of awakening is greatest of all. Oh and just as not guarding one's mind of awakening so that it falters and one loses one's purpose and just as this is a grave grave downfall so too is interference with the activities of another. Their activities in meditation upon Pajacitta, interfering with and preventing the development of the mind of awakening in another. To interfere with another, another's activities in Pajacitta will ensure a birth in the hell realm in the same way as relinquishing the mind of enlightenment oneself. Now, whether one no longer avails oneself of the mind of awakening or interferes with activities in the mind of awakening in others, whether the harm is done to oneself directly or his interference to others, in both cases, the negativity is immense. And so the 10th verse, destroy a single being's joy and you will work the ruin of yourself. No need to speak of bringing low the joy of beings infinite as space itself. <clears throat> Relinquish the mind of enlightenment oneself or interfere with its activities in another. And so great is the negativity that the repercussions are great. Oh, yeah, that doing harm to any single individual, in individual <clears throat> to interfere with, with their successful living causes for one the experience of suffering in hell realms. When this is so, then to do harm to all sentient beings and prevent their achievement of buddhahood, this has a greater consequences still naturally. Oh, 
Yamna catching what is unusual and you call it catch over his said lava yina and Tian Yaba Chimores Carsena. And you send party down to get Cheva Yina young, cook it up under Rangi, Changu Sim, and he duck under Satomic Changu Samba Yimba Yina, Java Chiglas, Java Chigla, and then Kurang Satomi Changu Samba Yimba Yina young. Changusen and Satobal Gurin the Negres, and Satobal Gurin would negate you by none, Sanji Toba Sanji Comatobal Gurin would never go away, and he Satobal take you the Chagre as much. Now abandoning the mind of a white uh, awakening. <clears throat> is a weighty fault, but equal to it, to repair it, is re-adoption of the bodhisattva vows. One may think so, and, and think that it is appropriate to abandon the mind of awakening so long as one can re-adopt it, and it, it has integrity when re-adopted. But to abandon and re-adopt and abandon and re-adopt the mind of, of awakening prolongs the necessary time one spins on the bodhisattva bhumis? Should one abandon the mind of awakening and adopt it again? When the bodhisattva, bodhisattvas on the bodhisattva bhumis spend eons there, one may protract the stay on the bodhisattva bhumi by two, three eons. So the fault of abandoning the mind of awakening is tremendous as it protracts the time required to achieve buddhahood. The thought process is one may abandon the mind of awake, awakening, but then upon readoption, the mind of awakening again has its integrity. So one might abandon it, but then readopt it and abandon it and readopt it. But this is to prolong the stay on the bodhisattva grounds and to protract the progress to Buddhahood. <laughs> And then to fail to protect the mind of enlightenment, to fail to preserve it, ensures for one continuous experience of hell realms from one hell realm one passes to the next hell realm to show this then the next verse uh, <clears throat> and those who circle in samsara mixing powerful downfalls with the power of bodhicitta back and forth will long be hindered from the bodhisattva grounds page 55 and so according to my promise i will act attentively from this day forth if I now fail to strive, I'll fall from low to even lower states. But the abandoning of the mind of a white awakening, one might think, won't there be intervention to prevent me from spending an eternity in hell realms continuously, why wouldn't the Buddhas or the Bodhisattva step in uh, to my protection to address this then the next verse? 
striving for the benefit of all that lives, unnumbered Buddhas have already lived and passed away, but I, by virtue of my sins, have failed to come within the compass of their healing works. The verse points to the equality of the enlightening activities of the Buddhas and their heirs. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say Inayan,三年的旧本车吧,然后旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧,旧本车吧
suffering. First one is born into the hell realms, and then there, the experience of pain is uninterrupted. Or should one achieve greater fortune than that, then even born a human being, one will be beat and crucified, cut open, and the, the pain will be continuous there too. It is this way where one is, in, is negligent, where one is heedless and fails to be conscientious. The consequence of this is such continuous <laughs> suffering. So that was up till now what we have covered as a quick review. So now we look to find if the mind of awakening isn't preserved and declines, then what more becomes difficult? This has two parts. The, it is the difficulty of achieving the leisures and endowments of a precious human rebirth which has in its parts the point that if the mind of awakening declines, it is difficult to achieve the leisures and endowments with the four wheels that accompany them. And two, that striving, because when achieved, the leisures and endowments too quickly dissipate. Oh, yeah, that's it, Tambudi. Subject Chidang <laughs> And this first section that if the mind of awakening declines, it is difficult to achieve the leisures and endowments resembles the presentation of the difficulty of achieving leisures and endowments generally um, above in that context, then it isn't about generally speaking the the leisures and endowments <clears throat> are not presented following uh, a description of the decline of the mind of enlightenment, but rather meditations on impermanence and the preciousness of the human rebirth with its leisures and endowments are presented uh, for the purpose of developing the mind of awakening. But here we have the situation of the mind of awakening having declined and then how the leisures and endowments of a precious human rebirth become difficult, a slightly different uh, Twist to the ladies and dogs. Oh, so the verse then, the verse 15, the appearance of the Buddhas in the world, true faith and the attainment of a human form, 
and aptitude for good, all these are rare. When will they come again? So that if the mind of awakening is abandoned, then later it will be difficult to find the leisures and endowments of a human rebirth. This is shown in the first. So the first line, the appearance of the Padas in the world, the appearance of the Padas in the world, to describe uh, the present the meaning here, what we have in in the precious human rebirth that we do have is a rebirth with eight leisures and ten endowments. Oh yeah, that's just a tradition of Juan's combat. That is the present and shed as an unpeasant share, Cardinal Udumora Nados, Udumora Nados in the Anikeba on the Zambulin Keba, the Yaji, Mape, Yaji, Mape, the number. The Jacky Keba, some son of Madoko Mendodis, Keba, the Yaji di Mando, Mendod Shergi or Tenashi, and the Sanjay did into Juan Singedi, any better to do. Sure, Hajang Tombo. <laughs> the improbability of the Buddha's appearance in the world is usually illustrated through a figure of the Udambara flower that in the waxing and waning of, of eons of time, that flower, the Udambara, will blossom only in the in at the rarest of moments, in the in the waxing of a, of an eon and momentarily. Now the Buddhas are rare too in eons as they pass the eons wax and wane and the lifespan of human beings waxes and wanes. And never during a period when the lifespan of human beings is increasing will a Buddha appear, only during the period when the human lifespan is, is shortening. But even then, between 80,000, from, from endlessly long lifespan to the 80,000 year lifespan, in that period, the Buddhas do not appear. It is between the 80,000 year lifespan and the, and the shorter lifespan of 40,000 years that the Buddha then <laughs> makes the appearance a very short moment. Chichigo. <laughs> Any 
Ya betul betul. Hanya lo mampu lo. Lo mampu ya. Oh, lo mampu lo. Tapi mana tuh, mana? Sangi jadi tuh cuma tujuh je. Mana tuh lo cedi? Mie lo cedi, selalu ya betul lo. Cuma dia dia, kan tu cuma dia dia korang jadi tuh cuma kau lo cedi lo. Tapi mie cedi lo jadi lo. Lo jadi lo. Sebab sebab selalu ya betul lo. Tapi kalau lo jahat dekik juga, tapi kalau selalu jawab sekarang, tapi ni lo cuma tu dekik mana selalu cuba. Tapi lo selalu cicik dekik juga, tapi kalau tapi kalau lo tu lo set, lo set tu cicik dia, cicik dia mana lo jahat dia berapa lama, tapi lo mampu sih untuk korang sahur. Oh, di sana. The exceeding rarity of an appearance of the Buddha is illustrated too when when Kashyapa Buddha came, the Buddha. The lifespan of human beings was 10,000 years. Kashyapa Buddha came during the human lifespan of the 10,000 year lifespan. And then that 10,000 year lifespan reduced gradually to the 100 year lifespan of our era. And in that period, no Buddhas appeared to show just how rare they are. And so now this is the period of the 100 year lifespan, the period of the coming of the Buddha Shakyamuni. We speak of the 100 year lifespan. And then when that lifespan is reduced to a 10 year lifespan, then that is the, the era of the 10 year lifespan. But in that period from that era of the 10,000 year lifespan, declining to the 100 year lifespan, no Buddhas appeared in the world. Oh, yes. Yes, that's it. I'm going to ask you, 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 पे हजार तुझे जाजा कुर्जु तुझे सांगे जीते तो माजू में तुझे छाता ताकि ने छोड़ जी पे सांगे जीते तो चुप तुझे रुंबो ही बने ना यहाँ जाजा चुस मान तो यहाँ मार चला तो तुझे मांग चाह सांगे जीते तो माजू में तुझे रहे ताकि दिल मान तो चुप चाह गौ को राग मार वाचना दिल में तो अने आराधना अने कारण तो मिलु दी ताचें बो ये बा घरे जिन्हें से ना अने कारण तो मिलु दी तब घरे जिन्हें ताचें बोले जिन्हें तेंजोग कारण तो मिलु की छाजें सांग गोया के बेवाज़ ये तो जरूरत चूस है तो वो तो सांग है तुझे तो इंसान तो आज तुझे तो सांग बोले इस इतने सी जगह वाले सोने से The appearance of the Buddhas in the world, the rarity of such an appearance, we would understand by recognizing that in all the time, 90% of that time and the time span, the duration of time is immense. And in that immensity, 90% of it, during 90% of it, there will be no appearance of the Buddha. Then in the remaining 10%, a Buddha may appear. The time is immense, the time span is immense, and 90% of it, during 90% of it, no Buddha appears. And so the rarity of the opportunity to engage with the Dharma. Now, this is to recognize the value of the time, to identify <clears throat> the time the nobleness of the time and the nobleness of the human body, noble in the sense of having the eight lasers and ten, 10 endowments. And this is the noble time of the time of the Buddhas. चिलोग चिरी के पाने के शिवाय ना वहाँ तो दंबोलिंग ते चान तो लोग पे मिलन के किसी शिक्षित औरे ये ना यार सांगे चिरी तो चुम्बे के लोग तुझे दी तो शूट ऐसे ना पे यूनियन दोस तो 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 चुग ताने ये ना को ठंडा तो लोग पे सांगे चिरी तो माचुम्बे लोटे हजार के मांबो सांगे चिरी तो चुम्बे लोटे ह दे साया मामा की कीजिए रो दिन यानी संगे जितने सुझाव बाद ही तब तुझे कुछ जैसे कोरा न्यूनी शोधे यो मरा कहाँ से जैसे न्यूनी है तब लो तब तब संगे जितने में लो न्यूनी आप जात मात्र को बियो मरा लो आधा लो न्यूनी आप जात सिकुड़े तब मिलने लो न्यूनी आप जात शोध 
이로하다. 로더사르 <웃음> many many millions of years the the account of the patas in time begins 2500 years ago before that time there was an immense span of time this is to show in short that the immensity of time and the rarity of the appearance of the buddha that until 2,500 years ago, there was no account of the Buddha, exemplifies the rarity of the Buddha in the spans of time known to us. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the exceeding rarity of such an opportunity as that one that follows from the Buddha's appearance in the world, that is, it is an opportunity in which we have all conditions required present then to us in eight leisures and ten endowments. And in th those ten endowments, the endowments are those <clears throat> for which others are responsible and those for which too we are ourselves responsible. All of these are present for us. Oh, now just as a, a factory is built an excellent one that can produce the highest quality goods and the products are are of the highest quality and they're expensive and they're difficult to get and so you say this is the most valuable sort of thing and it's all it's next to impossible to to get uh, and so in the same way we, we must speak of the precious human rebirth as as exceptionally valuable and to this end then i've described time in these terms Oh, yeah, that and they do some of the things that the Song Ani 
So then in the verse, the appearance of the Buddhas in the world, the appearance of the Buddhas in the world is an exceedingly rare event. Understanding that then one would understand too what a human rebirth entails. The lasers are eight, and they are first the leisure of not being born in a hell realm, the leisure of not being born a preta, the leisure of not being born an animal. The fourth leisure, not being not having been born a long lived God, because during their lives the thought of the Dharma never occurs to them. The fifth not to have been born in the remote region where there is no dharma when practices are different. Not to have been born with incomplete faculties. Not to have been born holding to a wrong view. Not to have been born in a region where the dharma has not spread. These are eight layers. Oh, yeah. Tejelamaji so, so the eight leisures to be pride to be deprived of any of these eight leisures means not to be afforded the time or the conditions necessary to engage with the Dharma. To be afforded with all eight of these leisures is to have the leisure time and the conditions to the Dharma. Separation from that which, or rather, <clears throat> leisure secured by the affordance of these opportunities and conditions. Oh, yeah, that in a Jorba juice. Jorba juice do. Shangi won a tango yabby, charging match. Rangi won a tango, charging match, dominant to your race. Oh, dinner and that, Tambu Shangi won a tango at the Hangi won a tango at the I think that Tambu Tishin was given to Chuan six. And then you bought the teacher's home was easy. And it teaches from the Temba Nebas. In the ten endowments, five are endowments from others. Five are personal endowments. The five endowments from others are first, the appearance of the Buddhas in the world. Second, the Buddhas having taught the Dharma. Third, the Dharma that the Buddhas taught remaining. Fourth, love for others existing. Fifth, followers in the tradition of the Buddha. Existing. 
<clears throat> the appearance of the Buddhas in the world, that it is rare, that should the Buddha never have come, there would, therefore, there would then be no Buddha Ta, if there were no Buddha, no Buddha Dharma Ta. If there were no Buddha Dharma ever taught, then there would be no teachings to remain. If there were no remaining teachings, then there would be none of the meditations on compassion and love. And without that, then there would be no followers and no method for following in the tradition. Oh, Tahandar <coughs> the appearance of the Buddhas in the world, the true faith and the attainment of a human form. In the second line, the true faith and the attainment of a human form describe the first of the two, first of two of the endowments, which are personal endowments, which one supplies from one's own part. The first is faith. True faith, that is faith in the in the in the three jewels, and faith in the tripitaka, the basket of the teachings. The attainment of a human form is the second personal endowment. If one did not attain a human form, there would be no following in the tradition of the Buddha. Then the third is to be born in the central land, not in a, a remote region. The fourth is to be born with complete faculties. And the fifth, to be born without <clears throat> responsibility for extreme karmic acts. Oh, yeah. That's あの、だし、え、天さんぼで、あの、そんばで、はじゃんがこんぼ。こんぼいんばで、あの、たんだ、ちしばで、こんなんなんし、とばる、ジュルルス。で、天じゃけ、なん、天じゃけで、たばちょ
to have eight leisures, 10 endowments, every one of which is present, to have every one present for all of these advantages to be met with in the same moment is ex exceedingly rare. It is rare because it requires first the accumulation of extraordinary causes to ensure eight leisures and 10 endowments. So the, so the preciousness of the precious human rebirth. So the difficulty of achieving a precious human rebirth. If one were to wish for a precious human rebirth, one would need to secure all the causes for it. This is all a piece with the rarity described in the verse. so the achievement of eight and eight leisures and ten endowments is exceptionally difficult. Now, what we have at present is a precious human rebirth, and it isn't like any any earthen object that one may happen upon. It is the result of past lives in which ethical discipline was maintained. Now, generally speaking, ethical discipline affords one a, a fortunate rebirth as human being or as heavenly being. But it is only exceptional ethical discipline that ensures one gains a precious human rebirth. And for that precious human rebirth to be complete with all eight, eight leisures and ten endowments requires further causes. <laughs> Never <clears throat> this we've covered already, and this is just a bit more of that. Now, at this specific time in which we have achieved the precious human rebirth, one thing, if it were sure to remain, but it isn't so, in fact, it quickly disintegrates. The eight leisures, the ten endowments fall apart for us, and when they will, we don't, we don't know. So while they are present, then we must engage in the mind of enlightenment. Mabe 
ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっ
the primary consciousness is the mental factor. <laughs> the primary consciousness and the and the mental factor or derivative cognitive state share an identical object when vision is perceiving an object, wood or stone. The primary consciousness is of wood and stone, and the derivative cognitive state too has as its object of awareness the same wood the same stone oh ta kuni chile kuni kawa chadal sem digi yu rig bati sem digi chire ta yu rig chan ni pena ta de sem jung di wol ta pena sambal cha sha wai na sem zo sem digi sem yu rig ba che ba de ani sem jung chem ba digi kor lar ma je ba chin ya yu le mi ba se wo de ya ta <laughs> but their function will differ. The clear, clear knower is the primary consciousness. But let's take, for instance, the mental factor of recollection, the derivative cognitive state of recollection. It'll have a different function in that it will hold clearly that which the primary consciousness <clears throat> knows it will keep prevent the prevent any forgetting from happening <laughs> With the same object of, of awareness, feeling too will differ from the primary consciousness in that feeling is an accentuation of pleasant or unpleasant sensation. Oh, yeah, that is it. I'll let the Simju Koran Sani on the Simju related to the money. That for the digitation, my own good to do to see my old judge. You say that I'm not to send the Simju Nibudi and it was you let us do one at that. Then, and Kuni do send the Simju Nibudi. The little more chick, Kuni more chick say, What had it? Oh, the dealers said that Kuni more chick, Simju Zamba. あの、こう、かだ、もう一気にベイ<笑> <clears throat> now, to, uh, tomorrow, then, uh, more explanation of this will come. So let's leave that for later. Now, uh, <clears throat> in the relationship between a primary consciousness and the derivative cognitive states, the relationship is of identical essence, but different differentia. Now, the difference in differentia, differentia <clears throat> has to do with... Rather, the, 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 the common essence between the primary consciousness and the derivative cognitive state follows from five congruent factors or five parallel factors. They are parallel modality, parallel time, parallel basis, parallel object of awareness, and parallel physical basis or congruent in these five ways. <laughs> for the parallel basis first, 
the parallel basis shared between the primary consciousness and the derivative cognitive state means that were the basis vision, then it would be in the vision, the faculty of vision will be common between the primary consciousness and the derivative cognitive state. Oh, then apply this to the other sense faculties, to olfaction, gustation, uh, somatic sensation, and the rest, to the nose, the eye, the rest, but rather in the same way that this was, uh, we spoke here of vision. Oh, yeah, that dance from what it turns out is anybody in that. <laughs> the parallel object of awareness means that for for in the case of vision the primary consciousness is visual and the derivative cognitive states will be visual they are not different they have they share the same a common object of awareness so the congruence or parallel object of awareness oh yeah that number swans somebody somebody number swans number swans and number swans and number swans and it kind of make it share but they Make a share but the banana to a moment of your tiny moment number ten to Kayena, Slim Juntian, moment number ten to Chiba, Chiki Yuaza, the number two was what is parallel or congruent modality. With parallel or congruent aspect. That means, for instance, in vision, a visual consciousness, a primary visual consciousness, <clears throat> experiences a property blueness. The property blueness, too, will characterize the derivative cognitive state. And so the parallel or congruence of modality between the primary consciousness and the derivative mental state. So <laughs> The fourth parallel or congruent time means that the primary consciousness is simultaneous with the mental, the accompanying mental factors. The primary consciousness in its first arising and then it's dissipating is simultaneous in its arising and dissipation with its ancillary mental factor. The primary consciousness and the mental factors arise, are present, and then dissipate simultaneously. And so the parallel or congruence in time for primary consciousness and mental factors. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. 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 That's
Sem rig zee rigtumba and the fifth is a congruent or parallel physical substance <clears throat> that in the the physical substance of the primary consciousness and the mental factors for each unique physical substance of the primary consciousness it will be shared with the mental factor the same physical substance shared between them in each unique case oh yeah that is one day number one zone b uh but this some the how gonna and it's same the same junior body or same junior the same the court on so we go down the single yes one now if you follow the these five congruent factors or five parallel factors <clears throat> common to the primary consciousness and and the derivative cognitive states then the way in which the primary consciousness is primary with its accompanying ancillary cognitive states will be clear to you too <laughs> Same now, next week, the Abhid Dharma of the Foundation School and the Upper Abhid Dharma in their differences in presentation of mind and mental factors, we will touch on. Uh, the Abhidharma of the upper school is different in subtle particular ways. But of the primary consciousness, understand that primary consciousness is visual is the consciousness of the the faculties, the primary consciousness is being visual consciousness, olfactory consciousness, gustatory consciousness, somatosensory consciousness, this and mental consciousness. These six just <laughs> <clears throat> and audition. Now these these six primary consciousnesses then are accompanied by these ancillaries that are the mental factors. <laughs> so that's the the explanation up up to the present year and uh, we will later describe each of the mental factors uh, we've here described primary consciousnesses but we'll look, we'll describe each of the mental factors, healing, discrimination, recognition, and the five determining factors and the rest.
So we'll stop here. Time is almost up, but if there are any questions. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, they're counted our six root afflictions, desire, anger, pride, ignorance, view, doubt. These are called root afflictions. They are part of the count of 51 mental factors. That's relevant. <laughs> <clears throat> These mental factors that accentuate kleshas are enumerated, and mental factors that accentuate virtuous states states of a mind states of mind are enumerated. Yeah, and then the others. Thank you, Geshe. Um, I'm wondering if you could share a little bit more about the um the modality um. When it was saying that uh, the the congruence in modality, um, if you could just explain a little bit more what is meant by um, the modality. Same <laughs> Sim <coughs> Congruence of modality, congruence of property, parallel property, <clears throat> describes that the, there is a primary consciousness and the object of awareness of that primary consciousness. The mental factors and, and the primary consciousness with its object of awareness 
will distinguish properties in the object of awareness. For instance, in the case of vision, vision will see a flower and be aware of a property of the flower that is yellow or blueness. And that yellowness, the property of the flower, the blueness, the property of the flower will be shared with the in the in the primary consciousness will also be shared and had in common with the derivative cognitive state or the mental factor in the identical awareness of property that is blueness awareness of property that is yellow yellowness the blueness the yellowness will be shared in common between the primary consciousness and the mental factor this is the parallel aspect or the parallel property, or the per parallel modality. Okay. <laughs> The <laughs> <clears throat> the properties that a primary consciousness is aware of, whatever the primary consciousness is, the properties that it is aware of will be the properties characterizing the, the mental factor that accompanies the primary consciousness. Now, in the case of vision, <clears throat> vision is perception of forms. And so the mental faction factor, the mental factors accompanying primary visual consciousness will be awareness of forms. And in the case of olfaction, the primary consciousness is the is the processing of, of sense. And so the mental factors too will be awareness of sense. Whatever the property that the aware, whatever the property the primary consciousness is aware of, that too will characterize the mental factor. So when so object of awareness and, and property are are would seem similar are similar. The object of awareness for vision is forms, for olfaction is sense, for audition is sounds. And then each of these accompanying these primary consciousnesses will be mental factors, processing form, sound. Uh, <laughs> Sem <coughs> As we investigate 51 mental factors, the 51 mental factors and the function of each, uh, you will naturally have more questions uh, as there will be, as there are in the 51 mental afflictions, rather the 51 mental factors, six root mental afflictions. Uh, in these uh, cognitive states, the function of each one to accentuate, accentuate a private, a primary consciousness will, will become clear that when a primary consciousness is aware of something that is made out to be desirable, how it will be accompanied by desirous attachment. Uh, when it 
perceive something undesirable, how it will be accompanied by aversion. <clears throat> this will too give rise to uh, more questions from you. Migomona and now, in the meditation, uh, understand, be aware of these six consciousnesses, six primary consciousnesses. Uh, the, in the centermost is the mental consciousness. Then it is bordered by these Consciousnesses informed through sense faculties. They are visual, the visual faculty perceiving forms with the accompanying mental factors. And audition, the faculty perceiving sound, sounds with the attendant mental factors. And olfaction, consciousness, processing sense and the ac accompanying mental factors and gustation flavors processing flavors and the attendant mental factors and somato sensation that is the awareness of textures textures <clears throat> and the like and so up and down from this mental consciousness through sense, sensory faculties, we find the five, the five primary consciousnesses from sense faculty, eye, nose, ear, tongue, physical sensation <clears throat> of the body, hearing, but there is, there are times when these are not engaged and mental consciousness is alone in its engagement. For instance, in the dream state, when none of the five sense consciousness is present, the, the mind is engaged. And in the morning, one recalls how the mind was engaged, the mental consciousness alone engaged. <clears throat> Just as you have an open, you have a, a room with five windows and a, a monkey in it, the monkey can run the one window, the next window, and the next window to the eye, to the nose. <clears throat> to the tongue, 
back and forth between them, but closed the windows and that leaves uh, what remains. Then deploy the the primary mental consciousness to the to the sense faculties, to the eye for the awareness of forms, to the ear for the awareness of sounds, to the nose for awareness of sense, to the tongue for awareness of flavors, to the body uh, <clears throat> for awareness of roughness and texture, heat and cold. And then to none of these, but to an object of mental consciousness, for instance, bodhicitta or emptiness, exercise the deployment of primary consciousness to each of the sense faculties as the meditation. Yeah. <clears throat> these these um, processing consciousnesses that are these six consciousnesses these exercises and, and we will uh, uh, conclude here Der <laughs> Thank <laughs> 
From my two collections, vast estates that I have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds wisdom eye is blinded by ignorance. Even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in your loving compassion for all my lives, Majushu. May I find the best of the paths of the complete teachings, and may I please all the Buddhas by practicing. Using skillful means drawn by the strong force of compassion, may I clear the darkness from the minds of all beings with the points of the path as I have discerned them. May I hold Buddhas teaching for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion, in whatever direction the most precious teachings, have not yet spread or once spread have declined. May I offer this treasure of happiness to aid all sentient beings. May the minds of those who wish for liberation be granted bounty as peace, and the Buddha's deeds be nourished for a long time by following the complete graduated path to enlightenment and the wondrous virtuous conduct of the Buddha's and their sons. May all human and non-human beings that eliminate adversity and make things conducive for practicing the excellent path never be parted in any of their lives from the purest path praised by the Buddha. Whenever someone makes effort to act in accordance with the sins of Mahayana virtuous practices, may he always be assisted by the mighty ones and may ocean the prosperity of good everyone. <laughs> I dedicate whatever virtues I've ever collected for the benefit of the teachings and of Indian beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of venerable Lotan Strap for the shine forever. In the land encircled by snowy mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful children's intents and gowns, please remain until cyclic existence is ended. Just as the brave Manjushri and Samantabhat with you realize things as they are, also I dedicate all these merits in the best way that I may follow their perfect example. I dedicate all these fruits of virtue with the dedication praised as the best by the victorious Dutchman ones of the three times so that I might perform the noble Bodhisattva deeds. May the supreme jewel of Bodhisattva that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. Thank you, and good night.